while ago, I was walking down the hallway at the middle school where I work as a teacher, and I was eavesdropping on a couple of grade eight boys. I do have to tell you, this is not always a wise thing to do. I have often heard things I can never again on here. But this day they were talking about a field trip one of them had just been on, to the local college where he was learning all about the trades, the different courses required, there were trades people there for the kids to talk to. So his friend says to him, hey man, how was that trades thing you went to? And the boy responded, sounding totally depressed, well, I've always wanted to go into construction, but I found out that you need math for all of the trades. Yes, I'm going to have to find something else to do. It kills me to watch people give up on their dreams because of math. I also have friends who didn't pursue their dream jobs because they would have to take a math course as part of their degree. And they truly believed they wouldn't be able to pass that course because they don't have a math brain and because they have so much math baggage from their youth. I bet some of you have your own math baggage in this room. Who here would say that they're not a math person? Maybe they don't have a math brain. Right. I am here to tell you this whole notion of a math brain is a big fat lie. It doesn't exist. It's a cultural assumption. If I were in Asia right now and I asked that exact same question, no one would be raising their hand because they assume everyone can learn math. Have you ever noticed in our society that no one says things like, Oh yeah, I'm totally illiterate. Just never really understood uh, reading and writing, so we're just not readers in our household. <laughs> but we have no problem saying, oh yeah, I can't do math. I've never understood math. We're just not math people in our household. I've heard that hundreds of times. So why is it totally socially acceptable in our culture to be innumerate, to brag about it even, but not to be illiterate? Part of the problem is that we have some deeply embedded cultural math myths. I'm here today to bust three of these damaging math myths. The myth of the math brain, there's only one right way to do a problem, and that math is all about memorizing. Because math is too important to give up on. As our world is becoming increasingly technological, we all need to become increasingly mathematical. And not just for jobs. Math is a basic life skill, just like reading and writing. And we use it all the time, even if you're not aware of it. We use it for everything from managing our money, programming our phones, to parallel parking. So let's bust some math myths. Myth number one, the math brain. Hogwash. Humans, this is just as true for females as it is for males, are born perfectly capable of learning math to high levels. We're actually even born with some innate number sense, the ability to understand quantity as well as basic adding and subtracting. Look at our history from our caveman days when we had to track the speeds of predators and prey, the Egyptian pyramids, the first navigators of the seas, the code breakers during the war, the modern day computer. Math is, always has been, and always will be the driver of innovation. But this belief we have that only some of us can learn it gets in the way of all of that. There's a researcher named Dr. Carol Dweck who studied this. This is what she has to say about it. People either have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. If you have a growth mindset, you believe you can learn anything you want to and that your attitude and your effort determine your success way more than any innate born ability. That's been scientifically proven to be true, by the way. If you have a fixed mindset, you believe you're just born good or bad at something. These are the, I'm not a math person, people. Here's the fascinating part. Neuroscientists have now discovered that just by having these mindsets actually changes the way our brain works, physiologically. So if you have a growth mindset, you're actually more able to learn. More of your brain lights up when you make mistakes and you're in that process of learning. If you have a fixed mindset, your brain is less active. It's less lit up, and when you make mistakes, you tend to just give up. So just having this belief that you're not a math person actually changes the way your brain works. And the worst part is, we unintentionally pass down these fixed mindsets to our kids when we say things like, don't worry, I wasn't good at math either. Myth number two, there's only one right way to solve a problem. Okay, audience participation time. I'm gonna give you a problem to solve, don't shout out the answer, just keep it in your brain. There you go, five times 15. 
solve it mentally. Got it? Okay. Who did it this way? The traditional way. Hands up. Okay. Only about maybe 20% of you. What about this way? Anyone just count by 15s? 15, 15, 30, 45. Great. And what about this way? Oh, quite a few. That's my favorite way too. Anyone do it this way? Multiply by 10 and cut it in half. Put up your hand if you did it in a totally different way than what I showed already. Right. So whose way is the best way? What is the right way to solve that problem? All of them. But I bet you didn't learn that at school, did you? You probably learned one way. And that's where we go wrong as a society. If we can teach math in different ways so that all students' brains have a chance to make sense of it, they will understand it, they will retain it, and they will like it. I tutored a young man named Nathan a few years ago. He was struggling through grade nine math. And I did a few weeks of summer tutoring with him. And at the end of that, he went on to successfully complete high school math early and took engineering at university. So his parents thought I was some sort of a mathemagician. <laughs> it was a nice reputation. There's no magic behind what I was doing. I did the same thing with him that I do with all the people I work with that unlocks their ability to be successful in math. First, I teach them they're perfectly capable of learning it. I basically help them to develop that growth mindset. Secondly, I teach them as many different methods as needed for them to understand it. All of our brains are different and unique. Why would we only teach it in one way? Myth number three, math is all about memorizing rules and facts and following procedures. It is exactly this way of teaching that has caused so much math baggage for so many people. And we have over 30 years of research that tell us when we teach this way, just procedurally, it does not lead to better problem solving skills and it does not lead to actually understanding the math. So I ask, what's the point then? Nobody likes following a bunch of rules and rituals they've had no part in creating. This is just as true for employees in a company as it is for kids being dragged to church on a Sunday, remember those days, as it is for students in a math class. What I see every single day as a result of kids who are taught procedurally is a complete lack of thinking. That innate number sense I was telling you about that we're born with gets educated right out of them and they just become these mindless rule followers, often not following the right rules. Half of the grade eights at my school get this question wrong every year, even though it's a grade four question. Why? They were taught to line up the decimals. Notice the three has no decimal. They have no idea what to do with it. Can't solve it. Here's another one. They think 235 thousandths is bigger than 7 tenths because it has more digits. They've taken a whole number rule and applied it to decimals where it doesn't belong. And this one really drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, when I ask them, how do you get positive 9 when you add a negative 4 and a negative 5? They always respond the same way. Two negatives make a positive. Not always. Folks, I literally have hundreds of these. I could do this all day long. I call these <laughs> rules gone wrong. <laughs> there are over 500 rules in K-12 math. Is it any wonder why kids get them all mixed up, commit rules gone wrong, and they just give up altogether eventually? But when we teach math in a way that helps them to understand it and we use visuals, we dig a little deeper, amazing things happen, like it did for Julie. Julie's a teacher that I mentored recently, and I'm sharing her story with you today, not because it's exceptional or rare, but because it's actually the most common story I hear. So Julie was really good at math in elementary school. She was a great memorizer. She followed the rules. She felt very successful completing worksheet after worksheet. Unfortunately, she didn't actually understand any of the math she was doing. So by the time she got to grade 11, she hit what's known as the math wall, the painful hit. She went from getting A's to getting C's. And even though she had a tutor and worked hard every night, she barely squeaked by. And by the end of it, she hated math. She was determined she was not a math person, didn't want to have anything more to do with it. Julie becomes a teacher, a languages teacher. <laughs> now, fast forward 15 years. She's working in a middle school, and she's in a position where she has to teach math to her grade 7 and 8 class. She is panicking. She's thinking, 
how am I supposed to teach math? I hate math. I can't even do math. I haven't done it since I was in grade 11. One thing she knows for sure, she is not going to teach it in the same way she was taught because what a disaster that was. That's where I come in. My job is to help mentor teachers in making this shift from teaching procedurally, the way we were all taught, to teaching why those procedures actually work. So Julie starts by watching the videos I produce on Educating Now, learning why the math works and how to use visuals to dig a little deeper. Then I come in and model some lessons for her in her class. I love this part because what I saw was that Julie's journey so closely mirrored my own, as well as so many other teachers that I've worked with over the past 10 years. Julie saw that when we use visuals and we focus on why the math works, it leads to a deeper understanding. Like this simple example, why 7 tenths is greater than 27 hundredths, even though it has less digits. At the end of lessons, her whole face would light up. She'd be like, this is so cool. I love this. I even caught her nudging students sometimes going, did you know that's why we did that? <laughs> For the first time in her life, she actually understood all of those procedures she had so diligently memorized in her youth. And she saw the beauty in math. She realized it was actually a web of connections and relationships and that it actually did make sense and that it was relevant. She found it useful in her own life. She was able to understand her finances better and she could do things like mentally calculate percentages to the shock of her husband. Julie was so inspired by her newfound love for math, she wanted to share it with everybody. So she did. Friends, family, she often did this over dinner parties, she told me. <laughs> Didn't always go over as well as she hoped. You can only imagine what dinner parties with me are like. <laughs> it's a lot of fun facts. Um, I snuck in a little fourth myth there, I don't know if you noticed. A lot of people think that if you weren't good at math by high school that it was game over. I have seen hundreds of adults learn math anew this way. Teachers, educational assistants, parents, never too late. When we shatter these myths and we help people to believe and to see that they can learn math and we teach different methods so everyone has a chance to understand it and we focus on actually understanding what it means, it is transformative. It transforms struggling learners into high achievers and math phobics into passionate math teachers. At the end of the school year, Julie was given a choice for the following year. She could either return to teaching her beloved languages or she could continue teaching math. She chose math. Thank you. <laughs>